With the release of the newest 1440p GPU from AMD now on the market and a much more attractive price point compared to Nvidia's RTX 4070, it's now a good time to take a look at how they do in a good old fashioned head to head. Because while one in theory should be a little better in performance, the better overall value of the other should potentially sway things back in its favor. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Hi oh, mate, you all right? Yeah, just got all the bits from my banging new gaming PC. Just got to put it together. It's going to be so much better than yours. Oh, right. What did you get then? The latest Intel 12th gen processor, a feature packed motherboard and 32 gig of DDR4 memory. See, miles ahead of yours. <laughs> you, you realize that board needs DDR5 memory, don't you? Don't tell me you went and bought the wrong stuff. DDR4 is so 2014. I can't believe you was that stupid. <gasps> what? No, you're joking. What should I get then? For me, I'd be looking at Corsair's newest Vengeance DDR5 kits. Or if you're wanting that all important RGB, then go for the Dominator Platinum RGB. Oh, you are a lifesaver. Thanks. But where can I find out more? By clicking the link in the description below, of course. <laughs> you call me the stupid one. So the RTX 4070 has been out for quite a few months now, launching back in April at the price point of $599. And with a quick check on Newegg, that still seems to be the case. Now in terms of the rest of the 40 series, the 4070 had less flack than others, like the 4060 and 4060 Ti in both memory configurations. People were buying the 4070 and things seemed to be pretty steady for Team Green, until AMD came along and launched the RX 7800 XT which set to take on the 1440p max setting market at a much lower $499 price tag. Now, while we've done content on both cards individually and compared them, I guess, quite loosely, we wanted to showcase exactly what each card can do and why you should buy one over the other. To do that, we put both cards onto our GPU test system consisting of an Intel Core i9-12900K and 32GB of Patriot Viper 6200MHz DDR5 dual channel memory on an ASUS Maximus Z690 Hero motherboard. All of our testing was done on Windows 11 and we tested a total of 19 games, including some to showcase ray tracing performance as well, and for the purposes of this video, we'll be looking at around 10 of them today before jumping into the overall averages across all of them. And due to the segment of the market that these cards are aimed at, we'll be focusing on 1080p, 1440p and 4K. So with that out of the way, let's jump in to those glorious benchmarks. So starting things off with a Playtale Requiem, and straight away at 1080p, the more expensive RTX 4070 comes in the stronger of the two, as the RX 7800 XT trails behind by 3%. Though when we move up to 1440p, we see things switch around a little, likely due to the extra 4GB of VRAM on the AMD card which now puts it 2% ahead of the RTX 4070, while 4K stretches that lead even further with the 7800 XT now pushing out 10% more frames. Call of Duty has always favored AMD more so than Nvidia, and that's clear to see as the 7800 XT pushes ahead in every resolution, with 35% more performance at 1080, a further 39% more at 1440, and a pretty astonishing 42% more at 4K, which considering the 7800 XT is 17% cheaper, doesn't look great for Team Green. As we move on to control, it's very much the same situation with the newer AMD card coming in 9% better at 1080p, 11% better at 1440p, and 13% faster at 4K, which then puts the 7800 XT hovering around that 60 FPS threshold that most gamers crave, and with a small adjustment to the settings could see you coming in above that desired baseline. When we enable ray tracing, we do see the performance drop as expected, and with Nvidia typically being the one with better ray tracing performance, that's exactly what we see, with the 7800 XT now coming in 3% worse at every resolution. Though considering the price disparity between the two cards, I'd still see that as a bit of a win for AMD. Cyberpunk is one of the most demanding titles that we test, and here it's all good for AMD again, coming in better at every resolution, with a 4% lead at 1080p, a much healthier 21% at 1440p, and a similar 22% lead at 4K. Though at the higher resolution, it is below a point that most would consider as completely playable at just 45 FPS. Though compared to Nvidia's 37 FPS, it is a lot better. As we enable ray tracing, we see some of the biggest hits so far with the 7800 XT now dropping 58% behind the RTX 4070 at just 42 FPS at 1080p. While 1440p sees that drop even further with both cards now arguably unplayable, with the RX 7800 XT 30% worse, and then at 4K, we see the RDNA 3 GPU coming in 19% worse. 
Though again, both cards wouldn't be a fun experience to play on anyway. Moving over to Doom Eternal and both cards come in with respectable frame rates at all resolutions and will end up being a joy to play on, though AMD does edge it slightly with a 2% lead at 1080p and 4% at 1440p. While 4K sees both cards coming in identically in the averages, though AMD again edge it slightly in the 1% lows. AMD keeps fighting strong in Dying Light 2 as the 7800 XT comes in 18% faster at both 1080p and the targeted 1440p resolution, while 4K still sees AMD come out on top with a 13% lead, but again just falls below 60fps, which is nothing a few tweaks in the settings can't fix to gain some more performance. Hogwarts Legacy sees the AMD 7800 XT again coming out the stronger of the two cards by 23% at 1080p, 29% better at 1440p and 26% at 4K. Though based on the frame rates, 1440p is ideally where you'd want to be playing this game at just under 100 frames per second. In Spider-Man Remastered at 1080p, both cards came in with identical performance at 169 frames per second, though you could argue that the RTX 4070 has slightly better 1% lows but at such a high frame rate, it's not something that you would even be able to notice. 1440p sees the performance very similar again, though the 7800 XT does fall behind by a margin of error 1%. And then at 4K, it fights back slightly, now coming in 1% better. But again, nothing that you'd ever notice. When we enable ray tracing, the RTX 4070 does hold up ever so slightly better, with the RDNA 3 GPU falling 2% behind at 1080p, a further 6% behind at 1440p, and 5% behind at 4K though the performance at all three resolutions was pretty decent overall and nothing that any gamer would be upset about. Microsoft Flight Sim is probably the most demanding game that we test and doesn't always give us much information to go off due to the severe bottleneck that a lot of GPUs face. But it's here where AMD falls behind by 14% at 1080p and a smaller 4% behind at 1440p. But again, the 16GB of VRAM helps propel the 7800 XT ahead of the more expensive RTX 4070 by 6% at 4K. Lastly, in Watch Dogs Legion, the 7800 XT again comes out on top with a 8% margin over the RTX 4070 at 1080p, a larger 19% margin at 1440p, and then a pretty astounding 26% better at 4K. Which is funny given that Watch Dogs has typically been a title that Nvidia have focused on in the past. Though one area where Nvidia can be, I guess, somewhat happy is when we enable ray tracing where the RX 7800 XT falls behind the RTX 4070 by 5% at 1080p, a further 7% at 1440p, and 4% behind at 4K. Though considering the price difference between the 7800 XT and RTX 4070, I wouldn't exactly call this much of a win for Nvidia. So it's looking pretty terrible for the RTX 4070, because even though in some titles it fought back and either matched the performance of the 7800 XT, or in some cases beat it slightly, it's extremely hard to ignore the extra 20% cost of the Ada Lovelace based GPU. And yes, for transparency, I know that Nvidia have DLSS 3, which could be their saving grace now. And I'm not purposely excluding it from our results to make AMD look favorable, but I would hate to recommend an RTX 4070 now to then find that AMD potentially destroys it later on when FSR with frame generation finally hits the public, because then this video, well, wouldn't age well. And also, some people just aren't sold on the whole frame generation thing, or as they claim it to be, fake frames. Now, while we showed 10 games plus four of them with ray tracing enabled as well, we have actually tested another five on top to give a better understanding as to how each card does in comparison to each other. And it's here where we can see things are actually a lot closer, with the 7800 XT only coming out on average 0.31% faster than the RTX 4070, with the main points being Cyberpunk with ray tracing enabled pushing that lead further down, as without it the 7800 XT would be 3.6% faster, though you could argue that without Call of Duty the 7800 XT would actually be 1.6% slower. So it's very easy to make an argument kind of fit your agenda. Now, as we move up to 1440p, which is the resolution that both of these cards are firmly aimed at, that lead does grow slightly in favor of the 7800 XT, which on average comes out 6% higher with again, Cyberpunk with ray tracing enabled being the main game that kind of really weighs that down. As without, we'd actually be closer to the 7800 XT being faster by 8%. But even at just 6%, it's not great for Nvidia, whose offering comes up 20% more expensive to buy in the first place. And remembering that these figures do include some ray tracing thrown into the mix as well, so we've tried to be, I guess, as fair as possible. 
Lastly, as we move up to 4K, the 7800 XT manages to come in 9% faster overall, again with some pretty stark differences between the two cards, mainly in Call of Duty, which favours AMD, and Cyberpunk with Ray Tracing, which favours the Nvidia card. Other than that, Nvidia clearly favours the Ray Tracing based titles more, while AMD is the clear winner in terms of rasterization. but we kind of already knew that as we went into this. Now with the price difference between the two cards being quite high and the 7800 XT coming out faster on average at all resolutions, it further instills that the RDNA 3 GPU is the better bang for buck, where at 1080p the 7800 XT comes in dramatically cheaper by 21% per frame, though it's still beaten by other cards like the 7700 XT. RTX 4060 and the 6750 XT and 6700 XT, though it goes without saying in terms of losing performance overall in the sacrifice for better value. Now at 1440p, which is where both GPUs are positioned by AMD and Nvidia, it's actually even worse for Team Green, where the 7800 XT now comes in 24% cheaper on average per frame, and now also beats the likes of the 7700 XT and RTX 4060, putting it just ahead of the 6750 XT and 6700 XT, which while they are cheaper, they are also older, which shows quite a healthy generational uplift from RDNA 2 to RDNA 3 without being expected to pay stupid amounts of money. Lastly, at 4K in a turn up for the books, while the 7800 XT now comes in a staggering 25% cheaper than the RTX 4070, it now also positions itself as the cheapest value for money 4K GPU in our chart, at $5.93 per frame, and with an overall average frame rate of 84 FPS, which while I know AMD didn't plan for the card to be aimed at that market, it's actually pretty damn impressive at the same time, and a real solid selling point for Team Red. So there we have it. I think we all had an idea, unless you're a hardcore Nvidia fan, as to which way this was always going to go at 1440, as it's always the case when GPUs are somewhat evenly matched in terms of performance, but one is slightly cheaper than the other. But there were actually some big surprises, especially at 4K where the newest kid on the block actually offers up some pretty exceptional bang for buck arguments. And with the prospect of good things to come from AMD's FSR with frame generation, seems like the RX 7800 XT is only going to get better with time as it matures and gets new feature sets added. Now the other big surprise is down to how much AMD have caught Nvidia up in terms of ray tracing, an area that Team Green have, I don't know, had much longer to work on and who in theory have the better technology for, with dedicated RT cores and yeah, for the last few years that's gone a long way. But again, as time has gone on and AMD have had you know, longer to work on what they're doing, they've definitely made some headway. And yes, Cyberpunk did show some strong performance in ray tracing that favoured the RTX 4070, but at the end of the day, it's one title, and the majority of gamers out there won't be spending $500 or so or more on a new GPU to play a single game. Though of course there is always the exception to the rule. Either way, I don't know, maybe we'll revisit this head to head in a couple of months when both teams have their respective upscaling technology to see who does what and how things perform then. Until then, that's going to do it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, then a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, then look at joining our super special Patreon club, where you'll get behind the scenes content, a look at our testing data on request, bi-weekly game nights, monthly live streams, and so much more. And it also helps us out like you wouldn't believe. The link for all that amazing stuff is, as always, down below. Also, if you want to go on to you know, the least toxic, most friendliest Discord server around, we have that as well. It's really an amazing place to go. And again, that link is down below. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.